Hello there and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean Me Joseph and my email is showpopulous at gmail.com. Feel free to send me any questions if you have any. For today we will be looking at DMZ helping uh, people understand network connections and how to troubleshoot networks. So let's go to let's go to the diagram here. Let's take a look at the diagram here. This is what we're going to be working with. Now, before we go into the diagrams, let's go to our website here at linuxjobber.com. And then you go to fundamentals. Matter of fact, let's go to proficiency. And when you get down to proficiency, we're going to be looking at task number four here, right? Inside the lecture notes, there are two areas. So this video is going to be divided into two parts. This part one is what we're going to be looking at right here. It's going to be down here. That's what we're we're going to be look we're going to be working on today. And then the part two, we're going to be doing configuration. So the part one pretty much just explains the big picture to you. So now let's go back to the diagram and I will explain the big picture. So when somebody says to you, we're talking about they're talking to you about DMZ. So let me write it there so that you can see it so somebody um you're going for a linux interview and they're asking you about dmz what does dmz stand for so first of all let me put that there this is called demilitarized demilitarized zone so what are we demilitarizing if we're demilitarizing something obviously something was originally militarized meaning that it was made strong so now what was made strong imagine this is your house right and we have and you have all of these servers in your house and your own machine so in our case as linux java um set up training school what we have set up is you have an admin server a backup server a file server and a web server in your own house as part of as part of our setup and what happens is that everything connects to a router right so that router is what connects to the internet via your isp and then there are other people on the internet also that are not in your house the way you connect to the internet is through your router and then through your isp so now let's look at how everything ties in together the way everything ties in together is that your isp via the internet send you um traffic send you pass you um pass you data and that data goes into your router how do they know it's you how do they send you traffic how do they send you data by your ip address that they give you <clears throat> so your isp gives you an ip address in this case let's just say they give you 64.223.21.165 this is called big ip because that is what you get from your isp now in general this will either be class this will be class b but i have seen in some cases where it's class a but in general it will be class b addresses if you don't if you want to understand class a b and c that will be a different video and i will show you which one later on for now let's concentrate on the big ip right so your isp comcast or verizon or uh, zane or t-mobile whatever you're using they give you some kind of ip your router takes that ip and then it does what you call small ip meaning that this router will now start giving all of these machines inside your network its own ip system in general we call that class c so that will take the form <clears throat> either dot zero or dot one i'll just take that zero for now dot something i'll just say 123 right now and then it will take your file server it will give it some kind of ip also the same format as 192.168.0 or something 
and then your backup server your admin server and every device that you have on your home network is also going to get an ip address from your router again remember that your isp is not the one supplying all these people this i this ip addresses now it's your router doing that job so we call that one small ip you generally start with 192.168 these are small ips if you even if you have a uh, a phone or a internet tv whatever um, you have at home they will all be inside they will all be given the same ip address so let's just say you also have your web tv anything you have inside any device you have inside your house will get its ip address from your router all these ip addresses are called small ip but the one that you get from your isp is the big ip which is this one here and in this video i mean in the next video in this exercise that we'll be working on you will see how we will connect i will connect all of this and do the configuration and set up all of this to show you how things work now when they say something is demilitarized as you can see the router has a cloud that com that controls everything so that nobody else can get inside this network it's controlling the entire network so what happens is that if you wanted to get make a, a machine now and put it outside of this control that's what we call demilitarized because this control is called militarized again in other words we we'll say this is firewall so this is a firewall that covers everything inside your house now if you have your router now tie into another machine out here now it now gives this new machine uh, let's say let's just call this one web server 2 right this web server 2 is now demilitarized why is it demilitarized because it's not it's not firewalled anymore it's not under the umbrella of the um controlled area even though it still supplies um it still supplied an ip address 192.168.0.0 15 for example this means that it's almost like a machine inside your network but it's also on the outside which means that visitors on the web can now send can now use um can now soft the web from pages served by this web server so this will me mean that if there's traffic traffic can then come from this visitor here via the internet and straight down to your web server so your web server can now serve web traffic so the traffic would then come through it doesn't come directly uh, that's written down wrong actually it comes through the router and then into the web server but at least people on the outside can now get to this machine whereas people on the outside cannot get to any of the other machines so we call this particular machine it's dmz meaning that it's demilitarized so it's meaning that it's not under the umbrella or control of the router in terms of protection it's not protected anymore the rest of them are still in the network and they are protected so that's what we mean when we say demilitarized so this particular machine now web server 2 is now in the dmz zone dmz zone is demilitarized and then this is this particular area is what you will call a militarized zone meaning that they are under the protection of the router meaning that they are firewalled whereas this particular web server 2 is not firewalled anymore is demilitarized is open to attack is open to entry from people on the internet that's how all of this is set up so in the next video we will then go into the configuration of all of this just so that you can see how it all works now this is good for interviews because a lot of companies then use um, 
they have they have their own web servers in-house and you would need to know how all of this is set up because they will ask you questions on how to demilitarize uh, a machine so that they can uh, they can serve serve their own web pages from their own company so you will need to know this so let's go to the next video where i will show you all of the configuration and how to set this up thank you very much for watching this video if you want to go to the next video as i said before you go to uh, home you go to tutorials then you go to proficiency lecture it's the lecture number four and you're looking at um, lecture note number two which is a video thank you very much for watching this video.